Chapter 1 The Hall of Mourning A Funerary Hall A bronze coffin lay in the center of the room, its surface engraved with all manner of birds, beasts, insects, and fish, as well as the boundless and ancient patterns of the sun, moon, and stars. A young woman clad in pristine white silk, too beautiful for this world, knelt before the coffin. Outside the Hall of Mourning was a world like a hidden realm, reminiscent of the pure lands of the Western Paradise. Terrifying figures, like heavenly gods and Buddhas, were engaged in vicious slaughter. Furious howls filled the air. Divine blood fell like rain. Yet, the interior of the Hall of Mourning was utterly silent. From beginning to end, the young woman knelt with her head to the ground, her expression neither sorrowful nor joyful. She was utterly calm, without the slightest ripple of emotion. Ha! So this is what it's like after you die. Dot. Si Yi smiled, but his eyes were utterly cold. Only when his gaze landed on the young woman did his eyes reveal a nigh indiscernible hint of gentleness. In life, he'd once roamed the surrounding void, visiting its various divinities. His sword had suppressed the starry sky, and he'd arbitrated an entire great realm. He'd once conquered the world, becoming the absolute hegemon of his era. He'd once been honored as the nine provinces of Wilde's one and only master of ten thousand Daos. In the eyes of the nine provinces' expert swordmasters, he was a peerless expert in the way of the blade, the swordmaster of abstruse force. But when word of his death spread, everything changed. Ha ha ha, smelting fate and refining the Grand Dao. From now on, Su Xuanjuan's heaven smelting furnace belongs to me. A burst of laughter rang out from the hidden world beyond the Hall of Mourning. The sound carried both delight and pleasure. Su Yi glanced over. It was a golden winged great peng, its wings so massive, they were like clouds blotting out the skies. Its feathers had a dazzling sheen, as if they were drenched in golden sap. Its unmatched radiance spread through the skies, the sheer majesty flattening the mountains and rivers on one side. It clutched a bright, fiery red cauldron in its enormous, heaven-rending claws. Even that little sparrows betrayed me now. Si Yi sighed in lament. He vividly remembered that, eighty thousand years ago, the golden-winged great peng had knelt outside his mountain gate, kowtowing for ten days and ten nights, all for the sake of serving beneath him and hearing his insights into the Tao. Out of consideration for its sincerity, he'd allowed the bird to cultivate by his side. Yet now, here it was, calling him directly by name and stealing his heaven-smelting furnace. A blatant traitor. Su Xianjun owes my levitating sword hall 893 lives. Moreover, he stole our sect's highest inheritance, the Ten Directions Sword Sutra. Today, we're here to reclaim what's rightfully ours, and we'll kill anyone who stands in our way. Thunder rumbled beneath the dome of heaven. A daoist clad in red robes howled with harrowing murderous intent. Su Yi was stunned. The levitating sword hall had once been a small, unknown sect. Its patriarch was but one of his thirty-six disciples in name. And it was precisely because he'd relied upon Su Xuanjun's prestige and protection that the levitating sword hall gradually rose to prominence and became one of the world's nine provinces' six great daoist sects, shaking the entire world. Yet now, the levitating sword hall was here too. What owing them 893 lives? That was pure, unadulterated nonsense. And don't even mention the Ten Directions Sword Sutra. He'd bequeathed it upon the levitating sword hall's patriarch personally. Clearly, upon hearing word of his death, the levitating sword hall had casually come up with an excuse to raid his possessions. All that talk of debts was nothing but a pretense. Public morality has degenerated. That's all there is to it. Su Yi couldn't help but shake his head. Despite himself, his heart sank. In all his years of life, he'd never once mistreated those close to him. Amidst the bloody rain, a grand procession of divinities shouted, Listen up! All of us once revered Su Xianjun as the master of ten thousand Daos. Today, so long as there is breath in our bodies, we won't allow you to exploit his misfortune and seize his possessions. Nonsense. You make it sound so righteous, but aren't you here to fight for old thief Su's treasures too? How freaking hypocritical. Some people laughed coldly. Others responded with mockery. What's that you've got in your hands? Immortal Ivy, the illustrious scepter, the nine lanterns of the dragon god, 
the glazed jade flask. Which of them isn't one of the peerless magic treasures Su Xianzhen left behind? If you're so sincere, why not place them into his coffin to accompany him to the grave? Dot numerous terrifying figures burst into cold laughter. Heaven and earth were in turmoil, and the battle raged on. The combatants were all peak level experts, major powers of the world's nine provinces. The sight of them fighting and killing each other was too terrifying for words. But in Su Yi's eyes, it was ludicrous, even comical. These scoundrels. During his life, they'd been blindly subservient, reverent, and respectful. Yet they turned around and acted like this the moment they found out he was dead. Everything really is different after you die. Su Yi looked away, then fixed his gaze on the girl kneeling before his coffin. His expression softened. At least Ching Tang is still here. Ching Tang had cultivated by his side since she was thirteen years old. Eighteen thousand, nine hundred years had passed since then. Within the world's nine provinces, she was known as Empress Ching Tang. In the eyes of outsiders, she was a lofty figure, an empress who reigned over all nations. Her prestige and authority suppressed the nine provinces, and even others of her cultivation held her in awe. But to Su Yi, she'd always been like a little girl. When she wasn't cultivating, she served at his side, her demeanor gentle and humble. Junior apprentice sister, you've already stood vigil over master's coffin for seven days. If we don't leave now, we won't be able to hold out much longer. Suddenly, a stalwart figure entered the hall of mourning. His white warrior robes were tattered and stained with blood. He'd just emerged from fierce, brutal combat, and every inch of him emanated terrifying power. Paimo. The head of Suyi's nine closed-door disciples. His title was War Emperor Paimo, and he'd cultivated alongside Suyi for 39,000 years. Ching Tang, who'd been kneeling before the coffin this entire time, gradually rose. Senior apprentice brother, she said, her tone cold and aloof, before he passed, master told us, his nine inheritors, to set out on our own. So tell me. Why have you returned? Paimo's brow furrowed slightly, and he said with an air of awe-inspiring righteousness, how could I just stand back and watch our enemies and those traitors destroy everything master left behind? Besides, junior apprentice sister, you've yet to leave. You're still here standing vigil. As your senior brother, how could I possibly leave you? Ching Tang turned around. Her beautiful eyes were as cold and sharp as a knife as she stared Pai Mo down. Things have already progressed this far, but you still aren't willing to tell the truth. Pai Mo's pupils constricted. Junior apprentice sister, what do you mean by that? What do I mean? A mocking smile tugged at Ching Tang's lips. Others might not know, but to me, it's clear as day, you've always been fixated on Master's Sword of the Nine Hells. Paimo's expression shifted slightly. After a brief silence, he grinned, his expression cold and dark. Junior apprentice sister, are you telling me you aren't standing vigil over Master's coffin for the sake of that blade? Ching Tang didn't deny it. Her fair, untainted features and pillarsly beautiful face were as tranquil as ever. Senior apprentice brother, you're wrong. I'm not just staying here on account of the Sword of the Nine Hells. What else do you want? Pai Mo couldn't help but ask. Ching Tang glanced outside the Hall of Mourning and watched the Devils and Divinity's brutal slaughter. When she spoke, it was without the slightest ripple of surprise. What master left behind? I want it all. Every word was calm and casual, but as she made this final declaration, Ching Tang's slender, beautiful figure gained an imposing, majestic air. You want it all? Pai Mo froze at first, but soon, he couldn't help but burst into laughter. He jeered, I never would have guessed that of Master's nine inheritors, the one with the biggest appetite would be you, the youngest. Junior apprentice sister, if Master were alive to see this, I'm afraid he'd be shocked too. He never would have guessed his most beloved, trusted Ching Tang was actually so greedy. In truth, Su Yi had been a detached observer this entire time. For the full version, visit poorread.com. He didn't care about the golden-winged Great Peng or the levitating Sword Hall's betrayal. He didn't care even when his greatest enemies fought their way to his door. But when he learned that his most highly regarded inheritor, Pai Mo, and most treasured, Beloved Ching Tang were each conspiring and scheming against him. 
he was silent. It was just a bit of treasure, yet it was enough to turn the two apprentices against each other. Alas! Clang! Suddenly, Ching Tang attacked. With a single swing of her sword, she left Pai Mo gravely wounded. His injuries left him a hair's breadth from dying. He seized his last chance at survival and fled the Hall of Mourning, but as he did, he cried out in a mix of shock, fury, and panic. Who'd have thought? You witch, you sure hid your true self awfully deep. He never would have guessed that his junior apprentice sister's cultivation was far more terrifying than he'd imagined. Su Yi was surprised too. So, that girl actually broke through a long time ago. Pai Mo didn't linger. He fled as quickly as he could. Ching Tang didn't pursue him. She stood alone before the bronze coffin, a hint of a sneer at her lips, muttering, how much would Master's heart ache if he knew that his eldest disciple was the first to collude with the six great Daoist sects? Then there's third apprentice brother, Wu Yao. Although he never got mixed up in this, when he left, he stole the abstruse primordial god mirror. This treasure alone is enough to boost him to the imperial realm. Dot. Unfortunately, Master has already passed on. He will never know any of this. Ching Tang sighed lightly. But Su Yi's expression gradually darkened. Only now did he learn that his most trusted eldest disciple had initiated this betrayal, effectively inviting wolves into his home. Only now did he learn that his third disciple, Hui Yao, had pilfered the treasure that controlled this entire hidden realm, the abstruse primordial god mirror. No wonder those traitors and his enemies had slaughtered their way into his territory with such ease. When this thought occurred to him, Su Yu was both furious and melancholy. It was then that Ching Tang suddenly walked out of the Hall of Mourning. Her silhouette was slender and graceful, and she seemed detached from worldly affairs. A pair of beautiful yet cold eyes swept across heaven and earth. Her icy voice rang out, from this day forth, Ching Tang, shall reign supreme over the wilds. Whoosh! A vast whirlwind of sword intent swept forth, covering heaven and earth. The misty green sword intent swept out like a divine executioner's blade, easily slaughtering one terrifying figure after another. In but an instant, heaven and earth were like a canvas painted entirely in divine blood. The remaining terrifying existences were, without exception, astonished. They felt a chill course through them, as if they'd plunged into an icy abyss. Submit, or die. Her tone was indifferent, but in this blood-soaked land, her every word spread far and wide. We're willing to serve. Empress, we hereby proclaim you our sovereign. Beneath Ching Tang's intimidating grandeur, the surviving experts and divinities all lowered their heads. That girl. Su Yi's eyes narrowed slightly. He couldn't stay calm, he never would have guessed that Ching Tang's cultivation had already reached such a level. As her master, he ought to have been gratified. But now, all he felt was an unspeakable loneliness and desolation. At a time like this, there was no way he'd misunderstand what was happening. His youngest and most beloved disciple had been keeping secrets from him all these years. Shortly after, Ching Tang turned and walked back into the Hall of Mourning. Her gaze returned to the bronze coffin. She bowed and offered her respects, then said calmly, Venerable Master, your disciple, Ching Tang, has kept vigil beside your coffin for seven days, and I helped you suppress your enemies and those traitors. In doing so, I have completed our bond as master and disciple. From this day forth, I shall be the sole inheritor of all you have left behind. As she spoke, she strode forward. Her hands pressed against the bronze coffin, and she whispered, the sword of the nine hells cannot simply accompany you to the grave. Once I've grasped its mysteries, I shall naturally return it to you. Venerable master, don't blame me for disrupting your rest. Bang! The coffin's lid opened. However, the moment it did, Ching Tang lost her ever-present calm composure. Her expression changed in a rare display of emotion. How is this? The bronze coffin was completely empty. Never mind the sword of the nine hells, even her master's remains were missing. Su Yu watched this entire scene play out and his fury seemed to set his pupils ablaze. Yes, he'd prepared for this possibility from the moment he decided to reincarnate and cultivate anew. His inner fury was nevertheless difficult to repress. But gradually, the fiery rage in Su Yi's eyes abated. 
In the end, nothing remained but endless indifference and icy cold. I hope you wretches are still alive and well when I return. Then, Siyi's imperceptible, ethereal figure disappeared into the void, vanishing completely. In the 108,000th calendar year of the world's history, the supreme ruler of the world's nine provinces, the sword master of abstruse force, Su Xianzhen, passed away. His death shook the entire wilds. Seven days later, the disciple of the sword master of abstruse force, Empress Qing Tang, swept across all four directions, heaven, and earth. She suppressed all the deities of the divine continent, and declared herself supreme ruler of the world. Five hundred years later, the Great Zhu Empire, Cloud River Prefecture, Guangling City. It was evening, and the sunset was like fire. Outside of Pine Cloud's sword manor, Si Yi stood alone, far away from everyone else, waiting for his little sister-in-law, Wen Ling Shue, to get out of class. Chapter 2 Live in Son-in-Law, Su Yi Look, you guys. That's Su Yi. A year ago, he was the sword chief of the Blue River Sword Manor's outer sect, a rising celebrity. But then, due to some unexpected misfortune, he lost his entire cultivation and became the Wen family's live-in son-in-law. What a pity! What a pity about Wen Ling Zhao! With that peerless elegance, she's Guangling City's uncontested number one beauty. Yet she had to marry a waste like him. Arg! Class had just ended. When those exiting Pine Cloud Sword Manor saw Su Yi off in the distance, their expressions changed, regardless of whether they were male or female. The sound of conversation soon filled the air. A hint of resignation flashed across Su Yi's face, but at the same time, he found it a bit funny. It had been a long time since he'd enjoyed such treatment. He recalled his past life. Starting from antiquity and continuing to the modern day, countless distinguished figures strove and competed for power. The six great Daoist sects towered proudly, looking down on the mortal world. The three great demonic sects brought about war and turmoil. Buddhas and gods commanded the wind and clouds, raising the curtain on a new world and dyeing the landscape red with blood. Yet one man reigned supreme as the sole sovereign of the wilds, and his sword kept the nine provinces at bay for 108,000 years. Only he, Su Xianzhen, had accomplished such a feat. Those known as imperial experts stood at the pinnacle of destiny, but no matter how lofty and proud they were, even they had to avert their gazes and call him venerate. Su Yi inwardly shook his head. If those old fogies from my past life saw this, I'm afraid they'd laugh so hard, their bellies would burst. The current him was tall and thin with handsome features. He wore blue cloth robes, and stood with his hands behind his back, emanating an air of aloof, leisurely indifference but they're not entirely wrong, either. It's true, right now, I am indeed rather pathetic. Su Yu attracted his gaze and sunk into silent contemplation. His current body hailed from the great Zhu Zhujing city, the Jade capital. He was a member of the Su family, but he was just the snubbed son of a concubine. When he was five, his mother, Yi Yufei, left this mortal coil. At fourteen, he entered Cloud River Prefecture's Blue River Sword Manor to cultivate. In just two short years, he rose to prominence in a single bound, becoming the number one disciple of the Outer Court, the Outer Sex Sword Chief. But then, a sudden incident robbed him of his entire cultivation. Shortly after, under the Jade Capital Su Clan's forceful arrangements, he became the live-in son-in-law of the Wen family, one of Cloud River Prefecture's Guangling City's three great clans. But then, the past is the past, and the present is the present. It'd be obvious to anyone that I'm no longer my former self. A peculiar emotion surged through Su Yi's heart, and an obscure, indescribable light coursed through the depths of his eyes. Clang! As if sensing Su Yi's mood, the cold, clear hum of a sword resounded within his mind, then immediately fell silent. It was a mysterious immortal sword, its title, Nine Hells. It had nine layers of divine chains shackling it. A year ago, the night before Blue River Sword Manor's trial of the sword, just as Su Yi's cultivation broke into the Chi accumulation realm, the illusory figure of the Sword of the Nine Hells silently surfaced within his sea of consciousness. The price he paid for this was his entire lifetime of cultivation. This was the true reason behind his sudden fall from grace. In the year following his marriage into the Wen family, 
Si Yi spent day and night sensing the sword of the nine hells within his sea of consciousness in an attempt to unlock its secrets. Just three days ago, during another attempt to connect with the sword of the nine hells, he surprisingly managed to release its first seal. In doing so, he simultaneously reawakened the memories of his past incarnation as Su Xianzhen. He thought to himself, it's as if I dreamed those seventeen years, and only now do I realize who I truly am. There are stories of men waking after dreams of grandeur, they must have felt much the same way. His current self was only seventeen years old, in the prime of his youth, with all the will and spirit of a young man. He perfectly resembled the sun at the beginning of its ascent, full of hope. Despite my current embarrassing predicament, with the methods and experience of my past life, changing all this will be no problem at all. Si Yi stood with his hands behind his back, and as his gaze shifted, he occasionally gave off a feeling that didn't quite match his age, as if he'd experienced all the profundities and vicissitudes of life already. It was the kind of calm indifference left behind after experiencing all the ups and downs of worldly affairs. There's no rush. I reincarnated because I wanted to break through the barriers I encountered in my past life's cultivation and prove the supremacy of my sword. Today, all is well in the world, and I am still young. Sooner or later, I'll naturally return to the nine provinces of the wilds, find those devil spawn, and settle the debts of my past life. Scene after scene of his past life silently floated up into Su Yi's mind. There was War Emperor Pai Mo, Empress Ching Tang, the Golden Winged Great Peng, the Levitating Sword Hall, the Six Great Day Oist Sects. H.M. Su Yi suddenly seemed to sense something. He glanced over at the Pine Cloud Sword Manor's main gate. Classes had only just ended, so young men and women streamed through the gates. The atmosphere was bustling, and the students emanated the characteristic air of youth. But it was then that the vibrant atmosphere sunk into utter silence. The crowd gathered by the gates of the Pine Cloud Sword Manor parted, clearing a path. Beneath countless gazes, a young woman stepped through the gate. She looked around fourteen or fifteen. Her lustrous black hair flowed behind her, and her movingly beautiful eyes shone with intelligence. Her skin was as snow white as cream. She was a full-on beauty in the making. Discover the complete story on poorread.com. Her flowy blue dress was seemly and appropriate. Beneath the sunset, her delicate and well-proportioned figure glowed with hazy luster. It was as if she were an immortal descending to earth. Many of the nearby youths were transfixed. Most of them were around fifteen years old, just the right age to be fascinated with the opposite sex, yet too young to have learned to conceal the longing and fire in their gazes. Some of the more easily embarrassed young men lowered their heads. The girls' expressions were different. Some were jealous or envious, while others were dejected. There was no shortage of beauties among them, but compared to the girl in the blue dress, they were obviously lacking. They were like fireflies before the light of the moon, they simply couldn't compete. Amidst the quiet, the girl in the blue dress's gait was neither leisurely nor hurried. Her complexion was fair, and her features were exquisitely crafted. Her big eyes were clear, and her gaze was penetrating. However, her expression was frigid, like an aloof iceberg standing apart from the rest of the world, so cold that others dared not approach her. Wen Ling Shue. It had only been a year since she entered the Pine Cloud Sword Manor, but every last instructor already saw her as a stunning genius. She was well known as an icy beauty. Xie Jue, the head of the Pine Cloud Sword Manor, had once sighed that she was bright and pretty, as pure as the ice and snow. She was like the pearl of the Pine Cloud Sword Manor. But in Si Yi's eyes, this girl who attracted attention wherever she went was Wen Lingjia's little sister. As well as his. Little sister-in-law. She's getting prettier and prettier. A hint of a smile flashed across Su Yi's face. In the year since his marriage into the Wen family, practically everyone had disdained and made fun of him, ridiculing him in countless different ways. Only when Ling Xue really treated him as her brother-in-law, and she even regularly argued on his behalf. Brother-in-law, what's the occasion? When she saw Su Yi in the distance, when Ling Xue's gemstone-like eyes lit up with delight and incomparable surprise. In an instant, her powdery lips curved into a smile straight from the heart. It was a smile like a sudden sunbeam. Her iceberg demeanor melted in an instant. 
Quite a few male students were visibly dazed, and their hearts pounded in their chests. So pretty. Some people couldn't help but mutter. She. She actually smiled. Others were entranced. Someone sighed, you might not believe me when I say this, but this is the first time I've seen Pine Cloud Sword Manor's number one beauty smile all year. Many others chimed in their agreement. When Ling Xue's name contained the character for Snow, and they thought it suited her. Despite her beautiful appearance, her temperament was icy and aloof. Despite studying under the same roof, practically none of them had seen her smile before. One of the girl's expressions was complicated. Ah. If I were as good-looking as her, I wouldn't have spent a year chasing senior apprentice brother Xiao to no avail. Even the girls had no choice but to admit that both in terms of appearance and temperament, when Ling Xue put inexorable pressure on her female classmates. Within Pine Cloud Sword Manor, none of the girls were willing to spend time with Wen Ling Xue unless it was absolutely necessary. They'd only serve as a foil to further highlight Wen Ling Xue's shocking beauty. Facing these varying gazes, Wen Ling Xue changed her prior unhurried gait and dashed right up to Su Yi. The young men's pupils constricted. They seemed to have a sudden realization. Did she? Did Wen Ling Xue just smile at that useless waste? It seemed they didn't dare believe it. They looked at each other. As far as they knew, although Su Yi was Wen Ling Xue's brother-in-law, he was still just a live-in son-in-law. With that low, awkward status, it wasn't just the major characters of the Wen family that looked down on him, even the servants dared make fun of him. This was common knowledge in Guangling City, too. Yet when Ling Xue's attitude towards Su Yi was incomparably affectionate, and she even let slip an uncharacteristic display of delight when she saw him. Anyone with functional eyes could see that when Ling Xue was happy. Strange. Something was strange about this. At first, the young men dared not believe their eyes. When he saw her bright, beautiful smile, Su Yi smiled back. So, is this how you act when you're in school? This was the first time he'd come to meet Wen Ling Xue after class. It was also his first time seeing that icy, aloof demeanor of hers. It was nothing like his impression of her. In the year following his marriage into the Wen family, she'd been vibrant and bright, cute and playful. There was nothing remotely icy about her. If I don't act cold here, who knows how many irritating guys will follow me around and pester me. It's way too irritating. When Ling Xue pressed her lips into a smile. Her voice was crisp and sweet, like the bubbling of spring water. Su Yi instantly understood. It was true. Even by the standards of his previous life, when Ling Xue was a first-class little beauty. Once she grew up a bit more, she was sure to be even more stunning. With that level of good looks, she was destined to have no short of admirers. When Ling Xue's gaze swept around her dazed classmates, she suddenly felt a little guilty, and she pursed her lips in vexation, muttering, it's all over. A moment's joy and I ruined the cold image I spent a whole year building up. It's all gone to waste. But then, she chortled and waved valiantly. Forget it. Who cares what they think? It's fine so long as I'm happy. She affectionately linked arms with Su Yi, her face nothing but smiles. Let's go home, brother-in-law. All right. Su Yi smiled back and nodded. Then, the two of them left together. The gathered students watched their departure. The area around Pine Cloud Sword Manor fell silent. Who can explain why on earth Ling Xue is so affectionate to that waist, spat a handsome youth through gnashed teeth. Everyone looked at each other. They didn't understand either. He's a live-in son-in-law, the laughingstock of Guangling City, and a waist who lost his entire cultivation. It's bad enough that he married a beauty like Wen Ling Zhao, but now he's extending his poisonous reach towards her little sister. How detestable! Many of the youths were indignant, and their hearts were full of bitter envy. Even the girls struggled to understand it. They too thought it strange. When Ling Xue was so proud, cold, and beautiful. She wasn't just shockingly beautiful, either. Even her cultivation was at the peak of the manor's current generation of disciples. She? How could she take a liking to someone like Su Yi? Even if he was her brother-in-law, rumor had it that her sister, Wen Ling Zhao, hated nothing more than her worthless husband. 
Meanwhile, on their way home, when Ling Xue batted her bright eyes and asked curiously, Brother-in-law, you've never liked leaving the house. Why did you come meet me at the gate today of all days? The young woman was bright and pure. Her delicate, graceful figure was vibrant and full of youthfulness. Your big sister's come back, said Su Yi. He spoke casually, but hints of inexplicable emotion rose within his heart. When Ling Xue's beautiful eyes lit up with delight. Big sister, she. She's finally willing to come home. A year ago, on when Ling Zhao and Su Yi's wedding night, when Ling Zhao had disappeared without warning and headed to the Cloud River Prefectural capital to cultivate at Blue River Sword Manor. Everyone thought that this was when Ling Zhao's way of expressing her displeasure and resentment over her marriage. Even when Ling Xue knew that her big sister loathed and rejected this marriage arrangement and that she'd never accepted Su Yi as her husband. Yet now, one year later, when Ling Zhao had returned. Chapter 3 My Wife When Ling Zhao after her excitement passed, when Ling Xue suddenly seemed to realize something, and her bright eyes looked Su Yi up and down once more. Brother-in-law, you haven't set a foot outside since you married into the Wen family. Moreover, you've been dejected, world-weary, and down in the dumps. I've been worried about you, I was really scared you'd take things to heart and do something bad. She examined Su Yi intently, then said in confusion, but now, even though only a month has passed since we last saw each other, you seem like a completely different person. Su Yi was inwardly stunned. Her intuition's quite sharp. Disciples of Pine Cloud Sword Manor got two days off a month, and it had been a month since Su Yi last saw Wen Ling Xue. He wouldn't have guessed that she'd pick up on his change so quickly. I thought some things through recently, said Su Yi with a laugh. I won't act like I did earlier anymore. So that's it. When Ling Xue lit up, and a radiant smile spread across her beautiful face. That's wonderful. I prefer you like this, brother-in-law. You have a certain. Hmm, it's hard to describe, but it's like they say in books, the air of a treasure in the making, a youth with glorious prospects, whose smile is as radiant as if you were carrying the moon, as aloof and transcendent as a solitary tree. She walked with her hands behind her back. Her dress was like jade, her smile like a flower. Her joy came straight from the heart, and she seemed like an entirely different person than Pine Cloud Sword Manor's Ice Queen. If those classmates of hers saw her now, they'd be too stunned to function. The emotional damage would devastate them. Su Yi laughed out loud. When someone changed, it often happened overnight. Especially in his case. With the knowledge and breadth of experience of his past life, his temperament wasn't even remotely comparable to what it had been before. The Wen family. They were one of the three great clans of Guangling City. Their estate was located in the northwest district, and it occupied a full hundred acres courtyards were scattered throughout, and the mansions were as numerous as trees in the forest. Night was falling. As soon as Su Yi and Wen Ling Xue returned home, they saw someone waiting for them by the door, and she was obviously frantic. She was Qin Qing, Su Yi's mother-in-law. Despite her age, she looked bright and dignified, and she had a distinctive, mature charm. She'd undoubtedly been a peerless beauty in her youth. You worthless waste of food. All I asked was that you bring Ling Xue back from school. What took you so long? Qin Qing shot Su Yi a vicious glare. She looked completely fed up. Just looking at him made her temper flare up. Who knew how much mocking laughter and idle chatter she'd heard lately on account of this son-in-law of hers? Su Yi's expression was calm. He wasn't the least bit concerned. It had been a year since his marriage into the Wen family. He was well aware of how fiery and unreasonable his mother-in-law's temper was. But then, he also knew that Qin Qing had opposed his marriage to Wen Lingjiao right from the start, and she'd been vocal about expressing her rejection and dissatisfaction. But when the family matriarch personally decreed that the marriage was to proceed, Qin Qing dared not disobey. She could only hold her nose and endure. When Ling Xue stuck out her neck for Su Yi. Mom, it was me. After getting out of class, I dilly-dallied a bit. Fine. Off to dinner with you, girl. Qin Qing waved her away irritably, then turned her cold gaze on Su Yi. Come with me. Everyone's waiting for you in the clan hall, you know. When she heard that, when Ling Xue couldn't help but ask, the clan hall. 
they're waiting for brother-in-law. What for? How is that any of your concern? You sit tight and stay in the family estate. Don't go anywhere. You hear me? Qin Qing's words were harsh. When Ling Xue simply said oh and shot Si a surreptitious glance. Her clear, bright eyes carried a hint of concern. Si Yi laughed. Do as you're told. Off to dinner with you. Only then did when Ling Xue turn and enter the courtyard. Qin Qing witnessed this entire reaction, and she was instantly on guard. She glowered at Si Yi. Ling Xue is still young. If you dare have any deviant thoughts about her, I'll cripple you even if it kills me. The corners of Su Yi's lips twitched. Am I, Su Xianzhen, really that type of person? Come with me. Qin Qing didn't waste any more words, nor did she spare Su Yi a second glance. She was afraid that if she did, she'd lose her temper and curse him out again. The clan hall. Resplendent lanterns illuminated the entire lavishly decorated space. The head of the Wen family, Wen Changjing, was present, as were the rest of the family higher-ups. They sat on both sides of the hall in order of rank, chatting amongst themselves. The atmosphere was both relaxed and lively. However, the instant Si Yi followed Qin Qing inside, all conversation died off as everyone turned to look at him. Their expressions all went a bit strange. There was cruel laughter, disdain, pity, and mockery. The lively, relaxed atmosphere sank considerably, too. Although these gazes were targeted at Si Yi, they made Qin Qing thoroughly uncomfortable. She muttered coldly, you wait here. Then, she dashed off to sit beside her husband, Wen Chang Tai. Si Yi still acted like this had nothing to do with him. He just stood in the center of the hall, and his gaze swept across the gathering of Wen family higher-ups. H.M. Si Yi paused. He'd just noticed a familiar, graceful figure. Explore the extended edition on poorread.com. Her eyebrows were thin and faint, her teeth were pearly white, and her eyes shone. She wore a pale blue dress, and sat with her long, slender legs together. She was entirely unadorned, with all the natural beauty of a hibiscus rising from clear waters, an innate, unsurpassed charm. Hers was a transcendent beauty. She was the real thing. However, her gaze was icy, proud, and aloof, as if she were thousands of miles away. Wen Ling Zhao. She was, at least nominally, Su Yi's wife. In Guanling City, she was a peerless beauty, second to none, with the good looks of a fairy. Her talent for martial arts was equally shocking and outstanding. Who knew how many talented youths admired her? Ah, so that's where that cold attitude Ling Xue has at school came from. She's obviously imitating her big sister. Su Yi instantly understood. When Ling Xue pretended to be cold, but when Ling Zhao really was cold. Her icy, aloof demeanor had already fused into her very bones. Meanwhile, when Ling Zhao noticed Su Yi's gaze and faintly scrunched up her brow. A moment later, she regained her usual calm, and her cold eyes didn't so much as glance in Su Yi's direction. She outright ignored him. Husband and wife had been apart an entire year, yet they were acting like strangers. Su Yi, I called you here to inform you of something. Sitting in the clan hall's seat of honor, family head Wen Changjing's tone was casual, but he instantly drew everyone's attention. Wen Changjing was clad in purple. He was bearded, and his hair was white. He had a face like carved jade. His hands were on his armrests, and he towered like a dignified mountain. Due to Ling Zhao's stunning talent, despite having only cultivated within the Blue River Sword Manor for a year, she had the good fortune to attract a major power's attention. They've given her a recommendation to continue her cultivation at Heaven's Origin Academy. In other words, Ling Zhao is already an official student of Heaven's Origin Academy. Wen Changjing glanced indifferently at Su Yi. You were once the sword chief of Blue River Sword Manor's outer sect. You might be worthless now but you should still understand what kind of vast and transcendent existence Heaven's Origin Academy is. To the Wen family, Ling Zhe's admission is a blessing as grand as the heavens themselves. So that's what was going on. Only now did Su Yi understand why the Wen family's higher-ups had called him here. Heaven's Origin Academy was the top cultivation spot in all of Gunju, the Gun or Imperatorial Province. 
Practically everyone capable of gaining admission was a peak-level genius in their state of origin. It had only been a year since when Lingjiao began her cultivation at Blue River Sword Manor, but she'd already earned a recommendation to continue her studies at Heaven's Origin Academy. It was immediately obvious just how shocking her talent for the martial Dao was. To the Wen family, this was indeed a blessing. But to Su Yi, this meant that it would be a long, long time before he next saw his wife. When he realized this, he glanced at the nearby Wen Lingjiao, but she was as cold and expressionless as ever. Family head, elders, have you called me here to ask my opinion? asked Su Yi. When the group heard this, they were stunned. Their expressions soon turned strange. A burst of jeering followed. Su Yi, you're overthinking this. This isn't up for discussion. It doesn't matter whether you agree or not. We won't let a wretch like you hold back Lingjia's glorious future. The speaker was Wen Changqing, Wen Lingjia's second uncle. He was whiskerless, and he wore brocade robes. His gaze was sharp and sinister. The hall burst into soft laughter. It seemed Su Yi's words had amused them. A mere live-in son-in-law wanted to share his opinion on this particular matter. Surely he realized that in the eyes of the Wen family, he was nothing but an insignificant waste. Yet against all expectations, Su Yi responded with utter calm and complete ease, as if none of this had anything to do with him. His relaxed composure actually made several of those about to taunt him rather uncomfortable. If you've already made your decision, might I ask why you've called me here? Su Yi asked casually. Before reawakening his memories, their taunts and insults would have been hard to bear. He'd surely have been indignant. But Su Yi was no longer that person. Why should he care about such things? It's because I wanted to take this opportunity to see you, senior apprentice brother Su. A burst of crisp, hearty laughter echoed throughout the hall, and a handsome, dignified-looking youth in wide-sleeved white robes strode inside. Instantly, the gathered members of the Wen family rose from their chairs, warm smiles plastered on their faces. Young Master Wei, please take a seat. Young Master Wei, we plan to send Su Yi to greet you. We're flattered that you'd pay us a visit in person. Please forgive us for failing to greet you properly. Their flattering words contained blatant fawning and adulation, each more zealous than the next. Family head Wen Changjing even went so far as to guide young Master Wei into the hall personally. Su Yi couldn't help but inwardly shake his head. Their behavior was really sickening. But then, the white-robed youth strode right up to Su Yi, his manner overbearing and arrogant. Senior apprentice brother Su, long time no see.